Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Education Exchange, one of the beautiful late May nights in Iowa City. Uh, today is a fun day for us. We are approaching the end of the school year, and we are coming uh, tonight uh, Ernest Horn stars of the new musical Golden. This is a hit show that I have seen uh, twice, and I was impressed with the amount of work and the effort and talent of this gifted group of uh, young, promising uh, future artists. With me tonight is uh, Professor Amy Phelps from Co College. She's professor of cello, and uh, she is kind of supervisor uh, of the show. And uh, are you help in direction to Amy, right? Yes, I'm helping to di direct the musical and work with the kids on staging but, it. But we have to tell uh, the audience because they heard about it, they read about it in the newspapers, and uh, uh, that it is a kid's effort, mainly. It's, it's not completely a kid's show. It yeah. was written by my son, Paul, who's 12. Which and one is that? The one in white, okay. <laughs> <laughs> who's waving. <laughs> and um, he got a lot of his classmates involved. We've had at least 17 to 20 kids involved at any time. And they've really enjoyed being part of a show. For most of them, it's their very first experience doing theater or singing and acting or running sound and props, and they've all been very enthusiastic, and many of them, as well as their parents, have told me that it's been a big boost of confidence for them. And that's why, and I'm telling the audience that this is one of the specials that we prepared for our audience for the end of the year. Uh, it's not the same kind of uh, routine uh, programs. It's fun. We are going to listen mainly from the stars uh, rather than listen to the administrators and teachers as we do, usually on education exchange. The idea came about uh, through uh, Mr. John Karhoff, uh, the godfather of this show, uh, Mr. Michael Peterson, and I facilitated the negotiation between Ernest Horn uh, Stars and you, and we eventually succeeded to have this wonderful group of stars with us. Uh, so do you mind introducing them and tell us uh, each role? I'd love to. So right behind me, we have Alpish, and he's playing one of the lead male roles of Fehrenbau, who is a composer in the musical. Next to him is Robert Walling, <laughs> who's playing Fehrenbau's rival, who's another composer, and his character is Neil. They've got a great song together uh, where they're kind of competing in a friendly way. Soren Edinger happened to be in town. She's an old friend of Paul's and a budding artist, and she helped us paint the backdrop for the set. Next to her is Yuka Nikki, who actually wrote two of the songs. She wrote the melody and the lyrics to the opening and closing songs, which are some of the longest and strongest shows in the and program. She used to be a horn kid, she and now she is a Northwest, right? Yes, she's a Horn graduate and a wonderful composer and musician herself. Next to her is Paul Amrani, who wrote the music and sings in the show. He plays Mikael, and actually Yuka is playing the role of Cindy. And Nina Elkadi, who is my right arm for the entire show, I couldn't run it without her because she is running sound and cues the music when it needs to happen, has also helped with props. Uh, we also got another girl involved with props because it was too big of a job to do both sound and props, but Nina's done a wonderful job. We have to mention, as a matter of fact, that we're sorry that we're missing Sylvia uh, tonight, right, who's played yes, by... Yes, poor Sylvia is played by Maddie, has strep throat. So she is resting so that she will be ready for our fundraiser and our performance Saturday night, June 2nd at 7 p.m. Maybe you will give her a chance some t other time to show her talent uh, through this program or another program. We'd love to. Public Access TV. In the meantime, I would like to give credit to uh, Emily uh, Ashenfelter from Public Access TV who is helping us tonight uh, and to the parents who are uh, 
coming to be with us in the studio uh, and uh, help support their wonderful, talented kids. Okay, uh, let me start with uh, Soren. You are the uh, <laughs> kind of the <laughs> transplant to Iowa City, right? Because you lived here for uh, a good part of your life, and uh, your father got a job uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as a physician there. And now you are back here visiting. Every time you have a vacation, you come. Uh, do you have your grandparents here? Mm -hmm. I'm living with my grandparents for a week, and um, I uh, then, yeah, they're stealing me from <laughs> uh, Nashville for a week. But definitely, you, you prefer to be here with them, right? Definitely. It's a lot of fun. I lived here for eight years, so yeah. I've been friends with Paul for six of them. Well, maybe? being in Nashville, and I'm staying with you still, uh, tell us about the uh, art atmosphere there because everybody is fascinated by the music and uh, uh, grassroots and uh, uh, Nashville is a capital of music in the south part of the United States. Um, well it's surprising you think that you'd go there and you I mean you do hear a lot of country music but not everybody is obsessed with country music there's tons of other stuff too. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, it's really nice because there are some really awesome artists there and art teachers at schools. So there's music and painting and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it, not just music. It, we can say it's a culture and artistic center mm -hmm. in southern the United States. Uh, good. Um, so um, I see on your left side is Yuka, right? Mm -hmm. Who is a, a composer and a writer. So tell us about your experience, Yuka. You can take the microphone, or you have one, okay. Um, well, I heard about Paul's musical, and I was really happy and excited because I really like acting, and I really like music and all that. And so one night, I was just there, and like a song like just like popped into me, and so I was like, oh, I better like write this down. And so I just told this to Paul, and then he kind of brought it on from there and then um, put in his musical and so. Well, and uh, as a matter of fact, one of the, uh, uh, one of my uh, collections in my daughter's portfolio is the picture of you uh, when you were, I think, four years old, dancing with Paul. So you have a long history uh, of uh, uh, collaboration or uh, working together, right? Yeah. And I think Soren was with you in this, right? Yeah. So the three of you uh, are kind of uh, troika uh, of inventions and creativity, yeah. which is a very good uh, indication of what we're doing in our school district here, uh, promoting arts. You know that arts always get slaughtered everywhere in the United States when there's budget cuts, but uh, we're happy that our district still supports art and put money uh, to uh, strengthen our art program, whether it's performing art or painting or dance or music. Uh, Paul, what's the story? How did it all begin? So, I've always loved musicals, and when I was about nine, I started writing a story, and at the time I had been writing a bit of music, not much, and then I realized, hmm, I could put this music and this story together. And I changed the story a bit. Like, I changed who the main character was, but all the characters were still in it. And then it turned into my musical. Uh, it, when you said you wrote this story, uh, I want you to walk me through the process of creation. I mean, you write the story first, and then you make the lyrics, or you write the music first, and then you put the lyrics to fit the music. I want, I want to be part of the, uh, I mean, take me uh, uh, on a trip to how you come up with the idea. Okay, so um, I did this in a really bad order. I wrote the music first, and then the story, and then the lyrics. And normally it's the story, and then the lyrics, and then the music. So I've learned a bit of a lesson there because I've had to edit 
the story many times to make it fit with the music because I really didn't want to change the music. And when I first started writing the story, it originally was just like a small writing project, like nothing big and at school. And then uh, how about writing the music? In the music, my how father do you do that? is yeah. a composer. Yeah, he's my and friend. Uh, arranger. Bernard? Yes, Bernard Amrani. And he's he helps me become aware of music composition. He showed, taught me how to use a music composition software called Sibelius, where I just click on the note I want and put it where I want, and then I can play it back so I can hear it, which is wonderful. And uh, how did you select Nina to do the sound system? Nina wasn't sure she wanted to sing. There are a lot of kids that aren't into singing or not sure that they're ready to sing in front of a group of people, but I think some of those kids learn that they like the production aspect and they want to be a part of it and that they can be an integral part of it by doing sound or lighting if we were doing lighting, costumes. Uh, so she volunteered to be a part of it and help out and I said, why don't you run sound? And she's done a great job. Well, talk to me about this experience a little bit. Well, um, I've known Paul since kindergarten, so for approximately six years, and he's always been interested in music. And about a year ago, he sent me the first one of the songs in the musical to me, and I immediately like enjoyed it and thought it was great. And so I wanted to be a part of it, but I, mean, I don't really sing. I mean, in the shower, but <laughs> I don't enjoy singing <laughs> in front of people. So Sometimes I hear this, I have to tell the audience, that you're my daughter. And <laughs> yeah, so um, I wanted to be a part of it and be able to help out somehow, so I decided I would like to do something, props or sound, and I started off doing both props and sound, and then eventually it got too much, so I just did sound, and um, so that's what I'm but doing. I, I want you to tell me, do you feel that you have uh, an important role just like the people on the stage or that's kind of secondary marginal not so important well if it were a play then I wouldn't have as big of a role as I do in a musical because it does revolve around the music so it is a musical and I think that that makes it a bigger role in what I do wonderful and uh, when I was sitting watching the rehearsal and all this uh, work that you were doing with the kids in the late hours after classes, you put a lot of effort there in. We've been working for months, actually since school started up in January. We started talking with the ELP teacher, Jan Bonesack, at Horn about actually producing the show, and she said, can we do it in one s semester, basically? And I said, I think we can, but we've got to get the kids and their parents to commit to coming once a week after school and maybe more. And as we went on, we realized that we needed even more individual practice, so I came almost every recess with my friend and colleague from Co College, Mark Falk, who directs choral studies. He helped teach the songs. A lot of these kids don't read music. They've learned the songs by ear and done a wonderful job, and we worked on the acting aspects and kind of did scene by scene and then ran the show with everybody. They've been rehearsing twice a week for the last month, and it's been a huge commitment for the parents and the children. And really proud of them. Well, we, we, with no doubt the uh, teacher's uh, participation is important, but uh, you know, as a, as a former teacher myself, I would tell you, it's not the teacher who is behind the success of any work. I mean, without having kids motivated, uh, self-motivated more, and ready to offer their, and, and, and their talent, and ready to serve the community, and they have this kind of spirit of teamwork and collaboration, Without this, I don't think we, we would be able to do. So I, I would give the credit to the kids rather than the administrators or the teachers. Definitely. I think yeah. there's a famous line from Karate Kid, the movie, where he says, there are no bad students, only bad teachers. <laughs> and and I, I in many ways, that. that's true. I would <laughs> second that. Uh, and then I am sitting there and watching everything because I think... Uh, I helped a little bit Soren to design some of the uh, backdrops, uh, right? Uh, and, and I was sitting there to understand what the play is all about, and then I find Robert bringing a smile to my face. He's, he's a funny guy, 
And that yes. was, ad in the, you added a lot of, of fun and uh, sense of humor to the seriousness of the, of the play. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, give me a couple of the lines that you, you said uh, uh, that are funny. Do you remember them still? Um, well, you have to remember them because we have a, a, a show. When, when is the show? It's your chance. Tell us. Wait, like <laughs> the, in the lines days. in the show that are funny? No, when will be the show? Oh, the show is June 2nd. June 2nd. Yes. And we are today is what? Um, huh. Wait, May. We are May something. May 30th. <laughs> okay. That's it. Uh, w uh, but we, you have to understand that tomorrow probably Emily will put this on uh, YouTube through P Public Access Woo. TV. So uh, people can see it and they will come. And, uh, and this show, you are part of it, right? Yes. And uh, this will be where? Um, Paul's Backyard. <laughs> Paul's yeah. Backyard, that's a good place. And you have a theater there, right? Um, yes, the stage there. Yeah, it's I was there and I saw that, which is wonderful yeah. that uh, uh, Paul and Amy are giving their home to be a uh, setting for the a set for the play. And that's wonderful. So tell me now, and then uh, give me a couple lines that make uh, people laugh here, our audience. Look at the camera and, and tell the audience what you said. I say a lot of things that are funny. <laughs> Okay. I don't really want to pick one specifically. It's hard. Okay. Uh, keep going. Um. Well, once when um the girls were dancing in one of their things, he was saying sharp, sharp. So I yelled out flat. Okay. <laughs> uh. But you have you have a good presence, and you are a scientist too. Uh, I remember seeing your work in the science uh, science show. Yes. Uh, what did you do that quickly? Because we need to go to Alpish after that. Okay. So um, I made a um a plastic that w that only used corn products and water, and that was a successful, very successful project. Yeah. It was Do you want to be a scientist in the future um, or artist? Well, I think that I want to be a writer. Right now, I spend my time Good. like writing this really long book. About what? Um, it's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an action-ish, action-y book. Uh, so, I is it fiction? Like you can. Um, yeah, fiction. Uh, okay. And then, um, also, like. If that doesn't work out, I'm gonna hope be, I'm hoping to be a software engineer. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> we will need all we all of us will need your help in this. Alpish, take the microphone now. I, I know that your your voice is is pretty strong, uh, yeah. so you probably don't need the microphone, but we have to use it. So tell me about your role and uh, why were you selected for that? Well, I play Fehrenbau in the musical, and Fehrenbau is a composer, and he is um, the sister of Sylvia. And he is out looking for this one thing called golden grass, which is a metaphor for fame and stardom, and which he is really hoping to c have. And uh, I think I was selected for this role of Fehrenbau, but... Actually, I really don't know why I was like the role. But, but I, I, see, I see your role very positive because you were talking to her about it's okay to be different. It's fine not to uh, feel that you fit in because you are lacking this part or you, because you don't play an instrument or because you are poor or because you are, have an accent or whatever it is. But you say... Uh, well, uh, difference is acceptable. Difference is okay. Uh, don't feel down if you are different. And, and I think, and you did this very well, and I see you, you stress those words when you talk, and this message that, I, I, of course, I would give Paul uh, a lot of credit for that, is done in a very sudden way, not speechful, not offending way, not repulsive way. Oh, let us be all together. Let us feel equal. No, you do it in a very nice way. The girl doesn't play instrument. Everybody in the family plays instrument. 
she feels down, depressed, and your message to her, go, you are okay, you can do it without this. Yeah, well, yeah, it's something I believe that it doesn't really matter, like what you said, like what who you are, where you're from, what your accent is, is that you can do something. It doesn't really matter what, you, yeah, what I've said before. So guys, I think uh, I see in the control room uh, our director is looking uh, that we should uh, do a sample of our work. I think we have some music here, and if we can, like, uh, put the music on, and whatever, uh, you'll be lucky if, <laughs> if you remember all the words. If you don't remember all the words, we'll go back and talk. star shining bright since it is far in the night is a star night likes it so <laughs> uh, thank you that that was very very impressive but uh, there is a one thing that I would like you to look at the camera talk to the community about because you are doing this for a very noble cause and I would like people to know that yes the kids wanted to do this as a fundraiser and uh, they chose the children's hospital for many reasons uh, so we're asking people, instead of charging an entry fee, to donate to the Children's Hospital, partially because kids have been involved and also because there's a little girl at Horn Elementary that they all know who has been very sick with cancer and they wanted to help her out. Paul has known other siblings, not siblings, but his cousin had cancer as a child and we know how important those hospitals are to help the families to support them and to give them good care in a happy, wonderful environment. So we dedicate the whole show to all the children that have been unfortunate enough to have to go to the hospital, but fortunate enough to receive care at the wonderful Uni uh, University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. Uh, Paul, you want to look at the camera and talk to the community, and uh, it's your chance now. Do you I have anything to add? Um. Well, we... I know um, that donations is difficult, right? You cannot donate officially, right? But... We can't ask for a donation, yeah. so we, we just hope people will... We cannot ask for a donation, but we can ask for support. Yes, we hope you'll come, especially. <laughs> we play with syntax here. <laughs> That's good. Uh, uh, guys, uh, that was very impressing. Um, we have about one minute uh, or so uh, I would like quickly each one of you to tell me what do you want to do in the future? Well, I'm not really sure what I want to be when I grow up, like my occupation, because I have so many different interests that have to do with music, sports, education, uh, including medicine, which I hope to study 
at John Ho John Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. That uh, sounds great. Robert. Okay. Um, again, I want to be a writer. I love writing. Like, it's just a fun way to express yourself. And and do a little bit stand up comedy on the side, please. Because I'm okay. going to introduce you to Yale Cohen, our star here, and you will be very good at that. So let us, we have uh, our director, Mr. Mike Peterson, told me we have one minute. So go. Uh, okay. It's your turn, uh, Soren. Um, finger. I also don't really know what I want to be when I grow up, but I like science, and so I don't know. I've been interested in being a marine biologist before, but I also like to paint and draw, and so who Take knows? Take care of the dolphins, please, for us. Uh, Yuka. Um, I'm not really sure, but I really hope to do something in the, like, music or acting or something like that, because that has been one of my dreams since I was a very little kid. And Paul. Um, I'm hoping to be a professional ballet dancer, and if I don't do that, or on the side, I'd like to be in Broadway musicals, because that combines singing, acting, and dancing, and I just find that very wonderful. And you told me before the show that you want to be the next Breshnikov. <laughs> right? um, That's I a bit ambitious. Plug that one. And Nina? A dentist. I'd like to be a dentist. Okay. I'm not, not sure. I am sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, Amy, uh, that was wonderful. I would like to give credit to Mr. John Karoff, uh, Mr. Mike Peterson, uh, and of course, Emily uh, Aschenfelter, to the parents, uh, Sonia and Robert's mom are here with us in the studio. Uh, Alpish, Robert, Amy, uh, and of course, Soren, Yuka, and the big star of the night, Paul Amarani and Nina and thank you very much ladies and gentlemen have a very good evening this program is going to be on YouTube tomorrow through public access TV will be on public access TV that TV will be on the channel 21 and channel 18 thank you very much have a good evening